What an extraordinary time to be here. We are gathered at a remarkable time in our nation's history. We have a president of the United States who shakes hands with the empty air. That's not normal. We have a president who wanders off stage until the Easter Bunny leads him back. That's not normal. We have a vice president. By the way, that's the joke. It, it works. I promise you, Herschel, go, go to a party. Just walk up at a party to someone and just say, Vice President Kamala Harris. The crack up laughing. She goes to the Korean Peninsula and gives a speech. She gives a speech about our great friends and allies, North Korea. And really, what, what did the people of North Korea do to deserve Kamala Harris? Well, they sent her back, unfortunately. So I'm here tonight to give you guys a word of hope and a word of encouragement. I've got two simple messages. Message number one, America is in crisis. Listen, we know this. You look at what is happening in Washington, at Biden and Harris and Schumer and Pelosi and Raphael Warnock. Every single policy they touch turns to garbage. It's all wrong. I mean, that's actually hard to do. If they rolled the dice, if they threw darts at a ball, something by accident would be right. But everything is wrong. You've got inflation out of control. Cost of food skyrocketing, cost of rent, cost of lumber, cost of mortgages, cost of health care, cost of gasoline, all through the roof. You forgot diesel. <laughs> we may not have diesel pretty soon. Look, it's so bad, Antifa can't afford bricks. <laughs> It's so bad, Eric Swalwell can't afford Chinese dinners. <laughs> In fact, I gotta tell you, it's so bad, Hunter Biden can't afford crack cocaine. It's bad. And then there's crime, crime skyrocketing across the country. Murder rates skyrocketing. Carjacking rates skyrocketing. Democrats have spent year after year attacking the police, demonizing the police, arguing for defunding the police, arguing for abolishing the police. Joe Biden nominated to senior positions in the U.S. Department of Justice, not one, not two, but three of the leading advocates in the country for abolishing the police. Every single Democrat in the Senate voted to confirm all three of them. <laughs> Raphael Warnock voted to confirm three of the leading advocates of abolishing the police. I'm here to tell you right now, the men and women of Georgia support the heroes of law enforcement. Yeah. And then we have the chaos at our southern border. Look, it's always been bad. A few years back, I was down on midnight patrol with the Border Patrol agents. They go kick open a stash house, start pulling out some big, really sketchy guys, big dudes all tatted up. The agents are all saying, Senator, Senator. And I'm going, Ixnay on the editor say. Just call me Bob. But we have seen in the last two years under Joe Biden, 4.4 million illegal aliens come into this country. Not counting the fentanyl. And enough fat fentanyl <laughs> last year 
that over 100,000 Americans died of overdoses. I'm sorry. You look at what's happening. The Democrats, the corporate media, they don't care about the children getting assaulted by human traffickers. They don't care about the women being sexually assaulted and trapped into sex slavery. They don't care about the dead bodies. As I've sat down with Texas farmers and ranchers that show me photograph after photograph after photograph of bodies they find abandoned. Pregnant women, elderly people, little kids. None of that do they care about until 50 arrive in Martha's Vineyard. And suddenly the white bread, lily-livered, hypocritical, socialist billionaires discover it's a crisis. AOC tweeted out to the world, shout out to the people of Martha's Vineyard for demonstrating the very best of American values. So I promptly retweeted her. I said, actually, you're, you're absolutely right. They deported all of them within 24 hours. And I'll tell you, as bad as the domestic policy has been, as bad as the economic policy has been, foreign policy is even worse. A year ago, Joe Biden disgracefully surrendered to the Taliban abandoned Americans behind enemy lines. And every enemy of America, they looked to Washington, they looked to the Oval Office, and they took the measure of the man. And tragically, they concluded that our Commander-in-Chief was weak and feckless and ineffective. And every enemy of America today is stronger and America is more vulnerable than we've ever been. Now, some of y'all might be saying, Ted, you told us you were going to encourage us. You really suck at this. But I told you, I have two messages. Here's my second one. Revival is coming. And I believe that with all of my heart. Look, one of the great blessings I get is to travel across the country and see what is happening. American politics has always been like a pendulum. One party gets in power, they go too far one direction, and the American people pull it back the other way. Every time we see some idiotic policy from Washington, more and more people's eyes are opening up. And by the way, if you don't believe me, maybe you'll believe Chuck Schumer. <laughs> Chuck Schumer today was talking with Joe Biden. I don't know that Biden knew that. <laughs> and apparently neither one of these have been around politics very long because they didn't notice a TV mic. So Chuck Schumer said to Joe Biden today, we're slipping in Georgia. No, Chuck, you're not slipping. You done fell. The reason I'm here is real simple. The reason I'm here is the reason you're here, which is to stand with someone you know and someone you love, to stand with someone who is a fierce lover of America, to stand with my friend, Herschel Walker. Yes. Look, Herschel has an incredible story. And everyone here knows it. Herschel grew up with grit and determination not too far from here. I remember sitting down talking to Herschel and I said, all right, when did you start lifting weights? He said, I didn't start lifting weights. I'm like, well, holy cow. 
just picking up cars or something. I don't know. But this is a man with just grit and determination. And you know what? He doesn't have to do this. Who in their right mind would go from being the greatest college football player in history yeah. to entering the lunacy of politics? And let me answer that question. The person who would do it is someone who loves this country more than he cares about himself. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. You want proof that Herschel's winning? Just turn on the TV and look at the Democrats and the media losing their mind. Coming after him with everything they got. Pretty soon you're going to be told that Herschel eats live kittens under a full moon at midnight. And that's ridiculous. Everyone knows kittens are breakfast food. <laughs> Sorry, I may have lost you the pita vote there. <laughs> so he, that, that's, that's a good point. All right. Look, the people of Georgia are fed up with what's happening. And they want a senator who stands with the values of Georgia. It's kind of funny. Raphael Warnock is running ads in Georgia saying he worked with me on a bill to build a highway. And he did. That's right. It's a Cruz Warnock bill. Congratulations. We're going to build a highway. It's going to be good for Georgia, good for Texas. You know what he did every other day in the Senate? Voted against the people of Georgia over and over and over again and voted with the radicals like Bernie Sanders and Chuck Schumer and Elizabeth Warren and AOC. Yeah. There is not a single member of the United States Senate whose views are more wildly out of touch with the people he's supposed to represent than Raphael Warnock. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. That's right. Last year, we forced a vote on the floor of the Senate to try to stop the Democrats from sending stimulus checks to millions of illegal aliens all across the country. Every single Democrat voted no. It failed by one vote. Raphael Warnock was the deciding vote sending millions of dollars a year tax dollars to illegal aliens across the country. We had another amendment. We said, okay, you want to support illegal aliens, how about criminals? How about violent criminals in jail? Can we agree not to send taxpayer checks to criminals in jail? Yes. Every Democrat voted no. Failed by one vote. Raphael Warnock was the deciding vote to send millions of your tax dollars to criminals in jails, to murderers, to rapists, to child molesters. We had a vote earlier this year to stop the Democrats from creating 87,000 new IRS agents to descend upon the American people and target and harass the American people. You already know the punchline. Every single Democrat voted no. Raphael Warnock was the deciding vote. Well, let me tell you what's going to happen in November. We're not just going to see a red wave. We're going to see a red tsunami. Yes. We're going to retake the House, and we're going to retake the Senate. And both of those come right through the state of Georgia. And let me tell you this, once we do that, once we have a majority, we need to act like it and use that majority. Amen. We need to stand up to the lawlessness, stand up to the corruption. And one of the very first things we need to do is refuse to fund even one penny of those 87,000 new IRS agents. And if you ask me, I'd go even further. I think we should abolish the IRS. We ought to have a simple flat tax where you fill out your taxes on a postcard. And then we should take all 87,000 of those agents and put them down on our southern border. 
And you know, if you think about it, imagine you traveled thousands of miles in the blazing sun. You're swimming the Rio Grande River. And the first thing you see is 87,000 IRS agents. You turn around and go home too. All right, I'm going to say two things before I hand it over to the star of the show. Number one, I want every person here to come out and vote for Herschel Walker ten times. Now look, look, we're not Democrats. I am not urging voter fraud. Although I saw two reporters in the back, they pulled out a notepad and said, oh, urging multiple felonies from the stage. But let me tell you how you do that. Number one, you make sure you show up and vote. Number two, when you leave here tonight, pull out your cell phone, scroll through your contacts, and find nine people to send a text to. Send a text to your sister. Send a text to your next door neighbor, your coworker. Send a text to your son. Say, listen, this election matters. I've never seen anything as crazy as what's happening in Washington, and I know this man. If you get nine people who wouldn't have voted otherwise to show up and vote, you just voted ten times. Yeah. That's how we take our country back. Listen, I think as conservatives, we need to do a much better job reaching a much wider group of people. I think we spend too much time talking to the same 2.6 million people watching Fox News every night. Now look, the choir needs love. They need, they, need, they need love. But we need to be speaking more to young people, to Hispanics, to African Americans, to suburban moms who are paying the price for these disastrous policies. Some of y'all may have seen a couple of days ago I went on The View and they lost their ever-loving minds. We need to be doing that. Look, one of the great powers when Herschel wins. I can't wait to see Herschel being able to talk to young people all over this country about common sense American values. That's powerful. Three years ago, I started a podcast. It's called Verdict with Ted Cruz. It became the number one ranked podcast in the world. We do it three times a week. We've had over 50 million downloads. Every single week, we beat CNN's morning show. So I want to ask you guys, pull out your cell phones right now and text the word verdict to the number 24005. Let me give that to you again. The number is 24005. Text the word verdict. What you'll get is a link to subscribe to the podcast. Why is that? Because it'll give you the information, the facts that when you're talking to your sister or your coworker or your neighbor or your son to know the truth of what's going on, not what the corrupt corporate media is saying, but the truth about what's happening in this country because it's each of you that is in the position to save this country. All right, last thing. I look forward in January to walking down the hallway in the United States Capitol alongside Herschel. And he and I are going to bump into a little man in overalls carrying a screwdriver coming to change the sign on Nancy Pelosi's door. And Nancy is going to get on her broom. <laughs> all right, all right, that's not fair. That's not right. Nancy is going to get on her private jet, the USS Broom, and fly back to San Francisco. And for her sake, I really hope her husband doesn't pick her up at the airport. <laughs> And Chuck Schumer is going to get on the Acela and head back to Manhattan. And then we're going to tell Joe Biden that it's 2025 and he'll just wander back to Delaware. (laughs) 
This is a fight worth fighting. This nation is worth defending. Free enterprise is worth defending. Moms and dads are worth defending. Our kids are worth defending. The Constitution is worth defending. The Bill of Rights is worth defending. America is worth defending. And Georgia is leading the fight defending this nation. I give you an all-time legend and the next senator from the great state of Georgia, Herschel Walker. Thank you.